Hey everyone, it's Hey everyone, it's Derek here, and this is just a quick review of the RX100. These are honestly more so uh, the things that I've just found interesting, the things that I've found worrisome, just from using it for around two weeks now. This is being shot inside on an RX100 in the uh, the 1080i. 17M mode. So here we have another RX100. This guy's a new one. Um, and honestly, I'm quite impressed with this camera given the size of it. I'm quite impressed with how it performs in relation to my uh, D7000 from Nikon, which is a lot larger. Uh, honestly, it will never shoot as well as an SLR. However, under conditions, especially outdoors, sunny, well-lit conditions, uh, the sensor actually does a heck of a good job for the size of the camera and that you can slip it into your pocket is just a uh, another plus. So, sorry if this gets a little rambly just because I really uh, haven't scripted any of this uh, because these are my impressions of it as a photographer. And uh, one of the first things that does bother me is this USB, uh, micro USB charging slash data sync port. The uh, the port itself is fine, however, the cover for it is plastic and it just feels quite flimsy for a premium compact that you're paying around $650 for. I would prefer that this be a rubberized port, uh, not only to better protect against dust or moisture, however, also because it, it just feels more reassuring. This is a plastic, it's a very thin port. If it's cold outside, I'd worry about this becoming brittle. And after maybe a few hundred, because you're not Generally, you're not going to open this compartment up and take the battery out to charge it because you're not given an external charger. So most of the times uh, when you're charging the battery, it's going to be charging it with the battery in the camera, which involves opening and closing this port cover. So I would worry long term about that port cover either cracking or falling off. Uh, another issue, honestly, that goes along with that is this, uh, this cover on the bottom. The rest of the camera actually is like anodized aluminum, which feels very weighty. It feels very reassuring. Uh, a lot of these switches, like the mode selection dial, feels very, very nice. It's very solid, very precise. However, the bottom of the camera is uh, plastic, and that's not a huge issue. However, this door, again, if you're going to be accessing your SD card a lot, if you're going to be swapping cards, or if you're going to be using an external card reader writer to transfer data from the camera, this door does feel like it's probably not going to make it past a few thousand, you know, uh, cycles. And the same goes for this HDMI port, although I'm honestly not going to use this much just because of the location of it in relation to the tripod socket, which is another qualm of the uh, of the camera. Once again, my my overall opinion of the camera is uh, is quite high because for a compact camera, it performs admirably, especially in uh, well-lit conditions. However, I'm just pointing out any issues that uh, any issues that I found while using it over the past two weeks or so. Some people have complained about the pop-up flash, the uh, durability of that long term. It does pop up quite uh, quite quickly, and these parts are metal that move. Um, However, there is obviously a, a ribbon cable that delivers the power to the flash. And uh, obviously within two weeks, I can't you know, tell you if it's going to crack or not. But uh, with enough use, I'm sure it will. However, how long will it last? I honestly don't know. I think if, uh, if you're using the flash a lot, that might be of concern to you. However, most of the shots that I take don't involve using the flash. So... Uh, honestly don't think it's as big of a deal as many people make it to be. Um, the zoom, if you use the uh, the dial up here for zooming, which is uh, what it's defaulted to in the auto mode, I do find that the dial moves a little slow, um, which is very nice if you're shooting movies. However, if you're shooting stills and you quickly want to go from you know, from one end of your zoom range to the other, it's much more convenient to just use the zoom um, zoom rocker on the top of the camera because 
this dial really involves you probably doing more, let's see, almost almost one revolution if not more, which is honestly just very, very loose for uh, for zoom. For manual focus, it's a lot nicer, the uh, the ratio that they have it set to, which, uh, which ends up working out fairly well. Just trying to think of any other issues I've had with it. I've had one or two random lockups. Um, this is on firmware 1.0.0, I believe. Let me just make sure. I'm fairly certain that's right. Yep, this is uh, 1.00. So I've had one or two random lockups on here uh, where it wouldn't respond to any button input. However, they have only lasted around two seconds or so. And uh, haven't really been a big deal. And one other issue that I have that, or I had with this one, um, I actually don't have it with this one. However, with the one that's, <laughs> this one, the one that you're uh, watching this being filmed on, the corners are quite soft. Some of the pictures, uh, honestly, I, I feel like this is just natural variation in the, the uh, you know, actually building the lenses where some of them will be sharper than others. The one I have down here is actually quite sharp and the one up uh, filming currently is not as sharp in the corners which isn't a huge deal because it is a compact camera you're not going to most likely you're not going to be using it for any professional um, any professional photography however if you are and you're worried about the corner sharpness and uh, that that is a concern then and the only other thing I can think of right now the battery life actually is quite good I've outside I've taken over 500 shots on a charge very easily uh, if you're not using the flash if you're using the flash I think around 300 is a is a safer bet it recharges quite quickly with the uh, included AC adapter the 1.5 amp adapter if you're charging it overnight or whatnot you can also just stick it in your computer and that works well any other thoughts hmm the screen is great the screen, especially in like the sunlight mode, uh, is very bright outdoors. It's one of the brightest compact uh, camera screens I've seen and I've used. And it's definitely usable. Obviously, uh, you know, an optical or an electronic viewfinder is still going to be better in certain conditions. However, for a compact with uh, no optical or electronic viewfinder, it does a it does a great job with the screen brightness. And it also changes automatically so if you're shooting outdoors and uh, you need to move indoors it's not you know it's not alarmingly bright <laughs> to those around you um, see so yeah, all the dials feel very nice all the dials are metal um, which is very very nice for a, a compact camera so again the camera itself feels very weighty if um, eh, maybe not weighty maybe it's the wrong word uh, very solid it just feels refreshingly solid. I suppose that's the best way to put it. Um, one or two other, hmm, I'm trying to think of one or two other issues. The uh, the front lens is obviously, uh, if, if you get the front lens dirty, which you will, if you, if, especially if you're taking outdoors where dust and, uh, you know, some spray or whatnot might get to it, definitely be careful cleaning that lens because it does have a, uh, anti-reflective coating on it and that coating can scratch very easily so just take uh, you know caution when you're cleaning the camera and uh, I used a SanDisk 32 gigabyte 45 megabit per second class 10 card and while shooting full HD video if I took more than three or four stills within maybe five seconds um, the camera does buffer a little bit uh, and it tells you, you know, don't shoot any more stills during this period. So I suppose that's just an internal right limitation of the camera. However, in, in normal use, it honestly isn't an issue. Uh, and you can shoot stills as quickly as you want if you're not shooting 1080p video or 1080i video at the same time. So those are my thoughts right now on the Sony RX100. If I think of anything else, I'll put it in the description or I'll annotate it. For more sample videos shot by the RX100, you can check out the uh, links that I put on the video, or you can check out other videos on my channel. Uh, once again, I'll be shooting some outdoor sports, I'll be shooting some uh, 
wildlife, uh, and we'll see we'll see what else there is out here for uh, for sample video as well as some low light stuff because the sensor that's another thing that I, I do enjoy is the uh, the sensor being as large as it is for a a compact of this size it does it it does a decent job honestly the uh, noise reduction algorithms are a little too uh, aggressive at ISO values of over like 1600 3200 I feel the noise reduction is too aggressive if you do lose some detailing in there however it, it does a it does a, honestly a heck of a good job up to around 1600 uh, definitely very clean up to 800 so if you're using the camera in low light especially zoomed out at uh, an aperture of 1.8 it does a very very good job for the uh, for the size so honestly I uh, definitely am going to be using this camera a lot over the coming months because there are some events where I can't take an SLR or I just don't want to take it for various reasons. And uh, this guy, honestly, it does a heck of a lot better than any cell phone will. It does a heck of a lot better than most compacts will, as it should for the price. And I feel quite confident in taking this out that I'll be able to get the shots that I need. So this has been Derek. This is a Sony video review of the RX100, the premium compact from Sony taken on an RX100, a separate one <laughs> that's on a tripod. So uh, in addition to getting a feel for the video quality of the RX100, I hope that uh, my review has helped you out in determining whether you want to purchase one too. Thank you and uh, have a good day everybody.